In this video, we're going to look at one-dimensional conduction with resistance networks, and we're going to apply this to things that we see around us every day, and those are different examples of window systems. So we're going to look at the examples for different window systems. Of course, we're going to use resistance networks to solve these 1D, heat, 1D conduction heat transfer problems, and then we're going to look at how we can modify the resistance networks to approximate multi-dimensional effects. We start by looking at a single pane window, and now we'll look at the window having actual dimensions. And so the windows are 0.8 meters high and 1.5 meters wide, and our first window is a single pane, a single sheet of glass, which is 8 millimeters thick. We're going to look at typical indoor conditions. We'll have an inside temperature of 20 degrees, a relatively low convection coefficient on the inside, a slightly higher convection coefficient on the outside, uh, and we'll look at a typical winter day of minus 10 degrees centigrade outside. The thermal conductivity of glass that we'll need to solve this is 0.78 watts per meter Kelvin. And what we want to do is calculate both the heat loss through the window in watts and the inner surface temperature, TS1. Let's continue with this example. We'll start by thinking about our assumptions. And of course, in order to use the resistance networks, we need steady one-dimensional heat transfer with no generation. We'll again go with a constant K, or the average K, and we're going to neglect radiation in these calculations and only think about the effects of radiation at the end. Once we've done that, we can use our resistance network, and in this case, we go from T infinity 1 through the convection resistance on the inside, the conduction resistance through the glass, and the convection resistance on the outside. We can easily evaluate each of these. We're working in terms of the total thermal resistance in units of kelvins per watt, and so a convection resistance is 1 over HA. A conduction resistance, for the planar case, is L over KA, and of course our convection resistance on the outside. Combine those into a total resistance, we add them up because they're in series, and simply divide the temperature difference between the inside and the outside by the total resistance in order to see that this window with a single pane of glass is losing 266 watts under these conditions. We can easily now that we've solved for Q moving through our resistance network, we can look at this part of the resistance network and our convection resistance 1, looking at T infinity 1 minus TS1 being R over R convection 1 equal to the Q we just solved for, we can rearrange this and solve for the surface temperature on the inside and see that it's minus 2.2 degrees C. So you would expect that the cooler window and that cooler inner surface temperature is going to con that cooler inner surface temperature is going to condense liquid on that window and because that temperature is below zero you're going to start to see frost or ice forming on that window with these low temperatures. So let's consider how we can make this window better. We're going to take that same 8 millimeters of glass and we're going to split it into two 4 millimeter panels and we're going to separate those by an air gap and we're going to take a 1 centimeter air gap so that the total package is 18 millimeters. So it's a 1 centimeter air gap. And we're going to ask the exact same question. What's the heat loss through this window system in watts and what's the inner surface temperature TS1? We're going to use the exact same conditions. The only thing I'm adding here is that the conductivity, the conductivity of air is 0.026 watts per meter Kelvin. So it's a significantly lower thermal conductivity than that of glass. And we'll proceed in exactly the same fashion. We'll make the necessary assumptions, including that of no radiation, such that we can use a resistance network. And now in our resistance network, we still have the convection resistance on either side, exactly as we had before. But now we have a glass resistance, conduction resistance for the glass here, which is now a four millimeter panel, and another one over here. I could add those together in one and we would into one, and we would have the exact same eight millimeter resistance that we had before. Of course, it's in series, so it wouldn't make a difference. But in between, we have the air resistance of the one centimeter air gap with this very low conductivity, so that's a, an additional resistor in our network. Evaluating each of those, convection and conduction resistances, they're all listed here, you can see the values, and of course the rest is identical. Uh, we're going to take the temperature difference between the inside and the outside over our total resistance, the sum of all of these resistances we calculated, 
and we will calculate that the total heat rate through that window is now 69.2 watts. So significantly lower than the 260 sum that we just calculated for the single pane window. So adding that one centimeter air gap has significantly reduced the heat loss through this window system. And now by the same process, we can calculate that temperature, the inner surface temperature with our new calculated 69.2 watts and see that we brought it up to 14.2 degrees centigrade. So at that temperature, we'll probably have fairly minimal condensation on the windows, and we certainly won't have any freezing if there is condensation on the windows. Now let's think about the limit that we could have here. We now have a window system that's taking up 18 millimeters. If we could magically contain and make sure that air wasn't moving in an 18 millimeter gap, um, that, might give us, that will give us a lower limit or close to a lower, that will give us close to a lower limit for the heat transfer that we could expect over that 18 millimeter gap. So it's magic because the air wouldn't stay there, it would move, but let's pretend it's not moving and that we have pure conduction. So we have an 18 millimeter air gap, the window is the same size, and all the other conditions are exactly the same. So now we have three resistances, the convection resistance on either side, and the resistance of an 18 millimeter air gap. Of course, that's that 18 millimeters over the conductivity of air over the area of our window. And when we find that it's 44.1 watts heat loss through this, and that inner surface temperature has gone up even more to 16.3. So we can see that that double pane window is pretty close to what we would get if we could magically make 18 millimeters of air stay in that same space that the double pane window was taking. We could go another way and say, what if we increase the thickness of the glass to 18 millimeters? And we had a single pane, but it was very thick. Following the same process, of course, the conductivity of the glass is much higher than the conductivity of air. So our conduction resistance in the middle for an 18 millimeter piece of glass um, is much lower than it was in the case of air. And correspondingly, we have a fairly significant heat loss, 244 watts, and the inner surface temperature is still below zero. So it's not that much of a reduction, making it 18 millimeters instead of the 8 millimeters that we had for the first, or the, the original case. Well, if the double pane window was good, perhaps we could try a single pane window, but now we're running into some limitations. I don't really want my glass thickness to be less than 4 millimeters, it'll be far too fragile. And so when I go to a triple pane window, I'm going to keep my glass thickness at 4 millimeters, and I'm going to keep my package length to be 18 millimeters, which means what I'm left with is two four millimeter glass panes. I have three four millimeter glass, sorry. What I'm left with is two three millimeter air gaps. I have three four millimeter glass panes for 12 millimeters. That means there's six millimeters left over, three millimeters for each uh, air gap. Let's carry out the analysis for our triple pane window. Again, the same assumptions uh, enable us to use this resistance network where now we have a four millimeter glass pane, the small air gap, a four millimeter glass pane, a small air gap, the four millimeter glass pane, and the convection resistance on the outside. Evaluating each of those resistances, following the same procedure, uh, we can now calculate that our heat transfer compared to the double pane window has gone up. It's now 97 watts, and of course, correspondingly, the surface temperature has gone down. It's still reasonably warm, uh, but we've added more expense to this window, and the temperature, the heat loss has actually gone up, and the temperature has gone down. Let's summarize our window calculation. So we started with an 8 millimeter glass pane, and we found 266 watts of heat loss and a surface temperature well below zero, causing all kinds of interesting problems. When we replaced it with glass, we saw a, a, a noticeable but relatively minor change. It was 8.3% reduced. We still had a temperature on the surface below zero. Our double pane window resulted in a 74% reduction, reduction in the heat transfer, and it brought our surface temperature all the way up to 14.2. Adding a triple pane with the constraint of keeping the package size the same and the uh, glass pane size the same of course makes it noticeably worse than the double pane window. And our limiting case of that magic 8 millimeter air gap shows us how low we can really go in that package size, and that's uh, 44 watts. So we're doing pretty well with the double pane window. It's a pretty good uh, compromise.
Now, in reality, we've neglected the radiation. You might want to think about what happens when we have radiation, and if you're shopping for windows, you can find windows that have low E coatings. Those low E coatings are low emissivity coatings, and they're there to try and minimize the radiation heat transfer from the windows. So a good window, you'll want that low E coating, and then you'll be getting closer to these kinds of calculations. You can also find windows that have different fill gases. Perhaps you have an argon-filled window, and that would be because the thermal conductivity of argon is a little bit lower than the thermal conductivity of air, so that will reduce the heat transfer even more. But of course, the downside is that you could get a leak and lose that argon, and then you're back to not having the argon-filled window. Now let's think about the case of a real window. In a real window, here's a picture of the window in my house. Um, there's the window that we're looking at here. And for the next slide, there's the door that we're going to be looking at. And the day that I took uh, the warmer of the images that I'm about to show you, it was about 0 degrees inside and, of course, 20 degrees inside, so not quite as extreme as, as the examples above. And this is a double pane window. Now, I've used a thermal, a thermal camera in order to take an image of the upper pane of this window. That's what I'm showing here. And we can see that a purple color or dark color is a colder temperature. The scale here is 8 degrees. And the, the white color is the hottest temperature, 16 degrees here. We have some readings on the camera, which of course are dependent upon the parameters that I put in there, so they may not be completely accurate. We'll talk about that in subsequent videos. But they're a reasonable estimate of the temperatures that we're seeing. And we see an interesting pattern here. We see that there's a cooler spot in the center of this window, much cooler spot in the frame around the edge of this window, uh, and the surface temperature uh, at this spot here is on the order of 12 degrees, uh, whereas the minimum temperature uh, in this box that I've drawn here, which includes halfway through this, this frame bit here, is going down to 11.5 degrees. So the differences are quite exaggerated here. Uh, but we also see, and focusing over here, that there's something a little different about this corner than the other corners. And if we look uh, in detail at that spot, we can see that in this corner, there is a minimum temperature of 8.1 degrees. So I'm going to submit that somebody uh, did a poor job of installing this window, and there's not enough as much insulation uh, in that space when they installed that window. And you see that effect in the corner here quite severely in the thermal image. But you might also notice that even on the surface of the glass, there's a much colder temperature here. It's noticeably cooler at the bottom of the glass even before we look at the frame. And that's because, of course, there's the, the conditions are a little more complex than we've been thinking about. There's natural convection on the inside. The air that is adjacent to this window is getting cooled because of that lower temperature, and it's moving down towards the bottom, and the coolest air is at the bottom having been cooled uh, from this system. So hot air is coming from the house, rising to the top of this, getting cooled and falling down, and so you see this pattern where you have this dead spot in the middle where the temperature is even cooler, and the warm air is moving along, getting cooled, and ending up circulating around. Now, I've taken a couple of images on another day, and on that other day, it was closer to minus 15 outside. And there you could see this significantly exaggerated at the bottom, um, much lower temperatures here. You're seeing a minimum of minus 0.3 on that colder day. And looking at a spot right at that point, it is minus 6.1 at that spot at the bottom of the window. And in fact, even with these double pane windows, there was ice forming on the bottom of the window. As an aside, there's an interesting note here uh, that we'll talk about when we talk more about radiation. But you can see a perfect reflection of me with the thermal camera taking this picture in this image. And we'll talk about why that is in subsequent videos. One more example before I move on, or one more thing to consider. One more thing to consider before I move on. Nope, before I say that. So it's clear that these one-dimensional approximations are, in fact, approximations. There is a temperature variation across this surface, and there is heat leaks through the frame that is holding this window together. We can try and expand our resistance networks to account for this, and of course they will be approximations, but they're good engineering approximations to start your calculations for heat losses. Before I go on, I want to show another example of that. I'm going to look at the door. So here's a photograph of that door that we saw in the other image. And 
you can clearly see in the thermal image that there's a heat leak along that gap where the, between the door and the door frame. And you can see that where we have put the, the, the doorknob and the deadbolt lock, there's a significant cooling around that door where we have those pathways for heat transfer to the outside from the inside through those nice metal pieces there. Uh, in addition, you'll notice there's a light switch here, and that's a light switch on an external wall. So, of course, there's a hole in there and an electrical box in there, and you don't have the same insulation that you have in the wall here and here. And you can clearly see that as well in the thermal image uh, where you're getting a heat leak through that wall where there's less insulation. So now let's move on to thinking about how we can adapt our resistance networks to, to think about this. Well, in a simple sense, if we think about our triple pane window, um, really there's some frame material there. And if we know what that frame material is, or we know the resistance of that frame material, we can build out our resistance network to show that here was the resistance network we had for assuming the one-dimensional window, but we have heat leaks through this frame. So it's a much smaller area, but a higher thermal, but a, high, but a lower resistance, and we have a frame on the bottom and the top. So we could make a parallel resistance network with what we had before, and in, resist, in parallel, these frame resistances. We can, of course, collapse this down to a simple total resistance, and what we have is three resistors in parallel. We can, of course, compute the total resistance. One over the total resistance is one over each of those resistances because they're in parallel, and we could revise our estimate of the heat transfer through that window, taking that into account. Before I move on from that, I want to make one more comment. We'll talk about um, before we move on, before I complete this video, I want to make one more comment. We have these air gaps in the window, and we've assumed that the air is not moving, and therefore we have a pure conduction resistance through there. Really, we'll have to consider the conditions under which that air is, in fact, stationary. If the air starts moving, we'll have convection happening in these gaps. Now, we want to prevent that from happening in our windows, but if it dis does happen, it's going to change uh, it's going to change the resistance of those air gaps and it's going to result in more heat loss. And we'll think about that more when we talk about natural convection.